Hello, welcome to this introductory presentation on electronics in robotics. Here is the overview of what we will be covering today in this presentation. We will begin with learning the general components that are shared throughout all teams. Next, we will learn about specific components to each competition. Then, we will learn about safety when working with electronics as there are some additional rules. And finally, we will cover the tasks and activities that you will be doing when working with electronics. Here is our first section, which covers the general components. They are components that are similar and serve the same purpose through each team. Here is a general list of most of the components that make up the electronic system in our robot. There's the battery, power distribution, a control module, motor controllers, motors, sensors, and a radio. Each of these components can be seen in the image to the right. We'll cover more about these in the next few slides. First, we have the battery on the robot. This is arguably the most important part of the electrical system, because without it, the robot wouldn't run. It is the main power source for the robot and powers everything on the robot. The battery is connected to the power distribution component of the robot. The top battery is an FTC battery, while the bottom battery is what FRC robots use. Next, we have the power distribution component. This uses a variety of fuses to appropriately distribute power from the battery to all of the components on the robot. There are only a certain number of slots on each module, and a limitation for the number of modules that a team can have. This requires teams to plan ahead for the number of components they are connecting to the robot. The power distribution panel here is specific for FRC, as it's the only team with a fully dedicated power distribution panel. FTC and VEX both integrate their power distribution panel into their control modules. The control module is next. This is equivalent to the brains of the robot. It contains all of the system memory and controls the robot during the match. The top control module shown is the VEX V5 robot brain, while the bottom control module is the REV control hub. We use an FTC. Motor controllers do exactly what you think they would do. They control the motors. They determine whether a motor is on or not, and then, depending on the motor it is being used for, the motor controller controls a different aspect of that motor. With the regular motor, it determines the speed and direction that the motor is spinning in. For a servo motor, it determines the position it is going to. The top motor controller is a Talon SRX used in FRC, while the bottom motor controller is a VEX motor controller. Motors are what creates motion on the robot. They convert electrical power that is being given into motion. Motors are very specific to what competition it is being used in, as each has a list of exactly what motors are allowed to be used. The top motor is a 775 Pro motor and is commonly used in FRC, while the lower motor is a REV core hex motor and is used in FTC. Next are the sensors. These are what provide the robot with feedback when it is competing on the field. The feedback then controls what the robot does as the feedback is ran through the robot's program. There are a variety of different sensors on the robot. Common sensors include the encoder. Encoders are used to determine the number of rotations of something on the robot, such as an axle. These help significantly in programming as it helps the robot to know exactly where it is on the field. The top device is a rev through bore encoder where the axle is put through the hole to determine the number of rotations. These can be used in FRC and FTC. Then there are cameras. They're both cameras that allow the driver to see what the robot is looking at. These are common in FRC where the field is very large, but less common in VEX or FTC since their field is smaller. Cameras can also be used for vision tracking and sensing items, such as helping to aim correctly when shooting a game element, or to help the robot make a decision of which element it needs to pick up. The camera shown here is a limelight that is used frequently for vision tracking and alignment in FRC. Next, there are limit switches. These help to control the robot from motion as they help the robot determine physical barriers within itself, often to prevent components from moving too much and breaking the robot. There are many more sensors as well, but these are the most common for robots. The radio is how drivers can wirelessly communicate with the robot while it is on the field. 
These are connected to the control module of the robot so that it can process incoming signals from the drivers. Radios are often the greatest source of problems when attempting to control the robot on the field, especially when the robot gets disconnected. The top radio is the VEX V5 robot radio. The bottom radio is the FRC robot radio. Radios are standardized for every robot in a competition as they need to be connected to the field control system itself. Now that we have gone over the basic components that every team uses, we can then continue on to the competition specific components. We begin with some FRC components. The first component is the Robo Rio. It is the control module on every FRC robot. The Robo Rio is probably the most expensive component on the entire robot. Please be sure to take care of it, such as not getting metal shavings and size of the ports. The next component was seen before when we were discussing power distribution, but it is the FRC Power Distribution Panel, or PDP for short. This is what all components that need power are connected to. Then we have the FRC specific radio. A new radio is provided by the first in the kit of parts every year. Here are the FRC motor controllers and motors. The three newest motor controllers are the Talon SRX, Victor SPX, which are made by Crossroad Electronics, and the Spark Max, that is made by Rev. On FRC Minotaur, we only use Talon SRX and Victor SPX because they both provide the ability to create a can loop that can be easily connected between the motors of the robot. The motor controller shown here is a Talon SRX. The SRX offers more control than the SPX because it can be directly controlled. The SPX has to have an SRX to follow and can only copy what the SRX does. This is helpful to be able to group motor controllers together for certain parts of the robot, such as the drivetrain, where all the motors are running at the same speed. We then have motors for FRC. Common motors include the Falcon 500, which are the newest motors, the 775 Pro, the SIM, and the NEOs. FRC 1369 uses only the Falcon 500 and the 775 Pro because they offer the best capabilities for our robots. Neo motors are also great motors, but due to the fact that they require the Spark Max motor controllers to function and that they cannot be integrated into the Arcan loop on the robot, it makes it much harder for programmers. We don't use them. The motor shown here is the Falcon 500. One special thing that FRC has is the ability to use pneumatics on a robot. Because of this, we have many special pneumatic components. First is the pneumatics control module, which controls all of the pneumatic components in the robot. That is pictured to the left. Next, there are compressors, which compress air. The compressed air is then stored in tanks on the robot. These components work together to allow for solenoids to work and control the flow of air to the cylinders on the robot. Pneumatic cylinders have two positions, so they're only used with a mechanism that needs two positions to function. A cylinder is shown to the right. FDC components are next. FDC is very interesting because many of the components that were described previously are all combined into one main module. FTC uses either the Rev Control or Expansion Hub. The Control Hub were tested in several regions in 2019 and are now available in all regions for use in the 2020 season. Expansion Hubs are still permitted though. The control and expansion hubs are very similar. They combine the power distribution, control module, and the motor controllers all into one device. What makes electrical system and FTC truly unique is their use of phones. In FTC, phones are used as a substitute for the radio. It allows the robot drivers to communicate with the robot on the field. The difference between the control and expansion hub is that the control hub has the radio communication built into the hub itself and communicates directly with the phone on the driver station. The expansion hub requires a phone both with the drivers and on the robot. This often causes disconnection problems for many teams and requires them to plan for additional space to be taken up by a phone on the robot. Like FRC, FTC has their own specific motors as well. They use servo motors. Servo motors move and keep a certain position. The motor on top is an example of a servo motor from GoBuilda. FTC also uses hex motors. These have a place for a hex shaft to be inserted into them or have a hex shaft attached so that the motion can be transferred from the motor to the mechanism on the robot. On the bottom is a Rev Core hex motor. Also, as you have noticed by now, Rev frequently serves FTC for most of their standard robot parts. Finally, we have VEX. The VEX V5 robot brain is their central control module and power distribution system. 
Components are connected through telephone cable to the ports on the robot brain. The robot brain is relatively new and boasts a touchscreen panel. The older VEX systems use the cortex, which is in the center, and shared similar functions, yet the connection for many of the components was not that secure. Finally, there is the robot radio that is specific to VEX, which is used for wireless communication during a match. Now we are moving into the safety portion of the presentation. For safety, please remember to continue to follow all general safety rules. This means no food or drink, especially drink, since we are working with electronics. Also ensure that you are wearing safety glasses at all times while working. There are three main additional rules for safety when working with electronics. First is to ensure that the system is powered off. Components can randomly begin to start moving if the system is not properly powered off. Additionally, when working with exposed wire, you may get shocked if there is still power through the system. Next, electrical is known for working with powered and heated tools, most notably the soldering iron and the heat gun. These both reach temperatures that will be hotter than an oven. If you do not exercise caution while working with these tools, you have a chance of seriously burning yourself. Finally, never mix the ground with the power line. This will create a short within the system and may cause components to break. Remember that components are expensive. Now that we know our safety rules, we can move on to the various tasks and activities that you will be doing if you choose to do electrical within your respective team. First task is connecting components. Electrical for robotics is very simple and often boiled down to connecting components together. To do this, wires will have crimps at the end of them. Wire needs to be stripped and crimped to attach a connector to them. Crimps are used as opposed to soldering so that components can easily be taken apart and reused for future years. This also standardizes our connections. When doing this, ensure that wires of the same color are being connected to each other so a short does not occur. The next activity is soldering. Here you are basically melting metal with a hot soldering iron to connect components or wires together. Remember that the soldering iron is very hot, so you need to ensure that you are careful when soldering. Finally, this is arguably the most important part of electrical work. Once you have created your electrical system, you need to manage the wires. You will use a lot of zip ties for this so that all of the wires are organized and secure. Not securing them properly leaves the possibility for electrical work to be torn out during a match because a wire caught onto something. That can be highly detrimental to the robot. Another part of wire management is to label or color code the wires. Labeling wires allows you to easily trace the path of the wires. This makes repair work and troubleshooting specific components much easier. And we're done. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned more about electronics and robotics teams and it helped you figure out what you want to do on your robotics team. Please follow this YouTube channel for more robotics content.